open your Bibles to two passages of Scripture. Uh, one in Genesis, the third chapter, and the 24th verse, and the other is Hebrews 4, 16. There's a contrast there that I, I want to share with you to bring us to where we're going to be talking today on the subject of now that sin is paid. Um, the sin has been paid for. And there is so many references to that fact in the scriptures. It's amazing how we have not known that. It I still gets by me how such revelation, such truth get past us. The sin has been paid. The sin of Adam has been paid. That sin is what separated us from God from the very beginning. Had that sin not taken place with Adam, we would have never been separated from God and we would know nothing about redemption because we would never have gone anywhere. But sin, the sin of Adam, separated us from God, but the righteousness of Jesus brought us back to God. Now, that is such a truth, it's amazing how we have missed that. And, and we've created all this religion, and people are just messed up and going nowhere fast. But God has been good to us and has revealed his truth unto us. And he said, you know, I love, you know, I, I like to, you know, kind of dramatize that the way that I can really see God saying to us, hey, it's got, like God says, hey, come here, come here, come here, sit down. Can I tell you something? Uh, that sin thing is over. Uh, why are you, why aren't you living like it's over? And so that is, and that's the truth. The sin is paid. If, if, if it's not, then we've missed something. But I'm telling you, God, the sin of Adam has been paid. Now, let me, I want to read here in, he, in Genesis chapter number 3. Genesis chapter 3. Uh, and verse 24. And then Hebrews chapter in verse 16. And what, is, what we, you'll see here is a contrast between what happened when sin came on the scene and then the atmosphere now that sin has been paid. It's two different time periods. Okay, Genesis 324, so he drove out the man and he placed cherubims at the east of the Garden of Eden and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. After the sin of Adam, Adam was driven out of the garden. God drove him out. I wanted to show you that verse and just all the verse I'll read there because that tells us that Adam, after sin, what happened? Adam was driven out. See the garden as, as Eden. That's what it is. We, it's life. It's, it's, it's life at its finest. In the garden. You'll agree to that, right? In the garden, you have life at its finest. But what happened? Sin come on the scene, and God drove him out. Now, look at um, Hebrews chapter number and look at the 16th verse and we see what happened now that Jesus has offered his blood and paid for Adam's sin let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need now that you see the difference I want you to see clearly the difference between your privileges after sin and your privileges after the sin has been paid. Amen. Now, what do, when, when, sin, when we sin, what happened? We were driven out. 
Now that the sin has been paid, we have been invited back into the garden. Now, that's the basic truth. And so we're going to, I want to, I wanted to show you that so that you can understand. Now, God has a word for you today that's going to bring a clearer understanding to your present relationship with God. And it's going to change you because I know it just, it is changing me. And as I, the more time and the more time that I spend looking at this word here and looking at what God has done, it just does something for me. It just makes me free. It brings in reality what God calls his word. He calls it the perfect law of liberty. We have been set free. Now, what was the real deal? What was the sin? What was the sin? And, and if you want to know, if you want to know, if you want to understand where you are, you got to look back and see how you got to where you are. You know, many people are frustrated in their environment now. And how, why am I this way? Well, if you want to understand, if you, can, if you want to understand where you are, go back and see how you got to where you are. And it'll help you understand where you are. So let's go back and see how we got to where we are. And it's so simple. I'm like, God, what happened to us? Why are we so thick? And why can't we see this? It's written. But it, we just have a problem seemingly, seemingly seeing it. And so go back, let's go back to the garden and let's look at what the actual sin was. What was it that got God to the point to drive us out of the garden? What was it? Now, what I found when I went back and began to examine this, I found a love depiction of God that I had never seen before. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Now, this is going to be some heavy stuff, and it's going to, you know, you may just shake your head a little bit, but if you'll stick with it, God's going to show it to you. Amen. And it, it's, it's really good. I, oh, wow. And I, don't, I love it because it's in the Bible. You know, if I had found this on the street somewhere, I wouldn't preach it. But I didn't. I got this out of the Bible. And I'm, because I wanted to understand, because I'm looking at, I'm looking at all that God is saying about us. And I'm looking at how we have, how sin have messed things up. But then, and I, and I see God repairing the breach, fixing the problem, paying for the sin, but yet seem, it seems as if though we are still bound. The church seemed to be bound. Does it, to, to, do, does it, does it seem the way to you? To do to me. You know, uh, even, even, you know, even we that have been enlightened somewhat, you know, we okay at church. But it look like it's back to the grind when we leave. And something is wrong with that. I don't think that's right. I think that this thing is supposed to be real all the time. If, if this is life that I'm living. Now, if, if, if it's a theatrical play, then it's a different story. You know, if I'm at the theater, then, then, then you know what I mean? We leave the theater, then we're back to the grind. But no, this is not theatrics. This is life that we are talking about. We are living. The, this is life that Jesus come to give us, and I know it is because in the Gospel of John, Jesus said, I come to give you life. I come that you might have an abundant life. I come that you might have it and it more abundant. That's to show you how to live. Well, well, a lot of people are not living it. They're not living. You're not living it. This life is supposed to be lived. I'm supposed to be just as happy I'm ha happy all the time. Amen. Life, living, life. That's what Jesus said. I come that you might have life and that you might have it more. I come to show you how to live. I don't want you to have peace. I want you to have joy. I want you to have all of your needs met. I want you to be happy. Yes. Well, we're not happy. We're, we're, a lot of, we're stressed. And I'm just meeting it where it is. Stress is a killer. It will kill you. And now it has no age limit on it. 
at all ages. Stress. That's not what God, Jesus died for you to have. Jesus did not die for you to be stressing out. You know, then they try to, after, after you get so stressed, then they try to give you a bunch of pills that you relieve the stress. Just, they're making bad matters worse. You know it's so. You know it's true. You know it's true. I never, I never seen so many kids on medication. Lord, have mercy on us. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. This life here that Jesus comes is for you to live and for us to teach our children how to live. We're supposed to live it and teach our children how to live the life that Jesus went to the cross and died for us right. to live. That's what we're supposed to be doing. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And God is revealing it unto us in his word. And so I wanted to know, God, what is it? What is it that we can do to fix this thing? We, I, know, I see the word of God. You said that you paid the sin, and it's real. Yes, it's paid, but something is, something is wrong. Yes. We're not seeing this thing. We're not understanding something. What is it that we are not understanding? And he sent me back to the book of beginnings and I began to go back and I began to look at the word of God to see what, what, what was it? What is it? What is it that messed us up? What is it? Now, if you go back to the second chapter of the book of Genesis, In verse 8, the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man who, had form, who he had formed. And out of the ground, the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now a river went out of Eden to water, to water the garden, and from there it parted and uh, became four river heads. The name of the first is Pishon. Is, it is the one that skirts the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good, Bedelium and the onyx stones are there. The name of the second river is Gihon, it is the one which goes around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Hittical. It is the one which goes along or toward the east of Assyria. The fourth river is the Euphrates. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and to keep it, to keep it. The Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. Now listen to this. Listen to what God says to him. Because what are we looking for? We are looking where, where did the error comes? Where did the error come? Because if you want to understand where you are, go back to how and see how you got to where you are. Amen. Now, listen, now, listen, now listen to God. The Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. Of every one you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. Now, there's two trees in the midst of that garden that, that's focused on. There's the tree of life, and there is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, notice the tree of life is not, the man can eat much of the tree of life as he will. He is not hindered from the tree of life. He can have all of it he wants. He can have all of the life of God he wants. All of God. He can have all of God. He can have as much of God as he wants. He is not limited to the tree of life. However, there is a tree that he is hindered from partaking of. And it's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, I began to analyze that and, and, and listen to God's counsel on that state. I said, God, what's with this tree of the knowledge of good and evil? And here's what he came to me with. He said, son, let me tell you something. My love for you goes so far beyond your understanding. 
And my love for you is so rich and so strong based on your, that I, my will is for you not to know good and evil. I thought, dear God, what? He said, yeah, my desire for you is for you. I love you so much. I want you to be, to, I want you to be so free to do whatever you want to do that there is no barrier between good and evil. There is no such thing for you as good and evil. I thought, God, what? He said, that is my will for you. And it, it, just, it just kind of took me out. That's, that's more than I can, I can't, I, can't, I can't process that. Maybe you can, I can't. No evil, no, 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 I don't want you to even know. I want you to have zero knowledge of good and evil. That's the way I made you. That's the way I want you. That's the way I want you. And that, and that is a level of, that's freedom like no human has ever, that's a freedom. That's a freedom that you, I don't even, I can't even imagine a freedom of that nature. That is freedom taken to a level beyond your imagination. Now, here's, here's where it gets good at. God has restored that. Now, I knew I was going to lose half of you when I said that. I knew I was going to lose half of you. And I lose the rest of you when we get on down through this. And that's what I mean. So this, is, this is real. This is something here. This is something. That is what God is restoring. No, no, and that's what, that's what has... See, we can believe. When we say, did Jesus pay for the sin? Yes. We can believe that. But now, and, and when God says, and when you look at the language that God uses in the new covenant, and he says, I won't remember sin anymore. Right. That's true. And we say it, but it's, we can't process it. Because, see, we're trying to process this stuff with our mind. And we can't process that. And I found out why the church still has the whole church in sin, still have us in sin. I found out. Because God has restored us to where we were, but we still where we fell to. And we are trying to take the word of God and process it with our mind and try to, that's why everybody thinks that they're still in sin because they cannot fathom not being, they can't fathom being no separation between good and evil. Wow. Wow. Your mind can't fathom that. Yeah. Now I know that this is, this is going to be tight for you, it's going to be yeah. tough for you, but just stay with me. And I tell you what, it's going to take God's wisdom and will to knowledge to reveal this to you. You're going to have to, God's going to have to reveal it to you because it just, it just knocked my socks off. There is the knowledge, the, what, now what, okay, let's go back, because it's right there. What is the thing that did it? That tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God said, I didn't want you to know no difference. Because once you know the difference, it's over for you. You become like one of us, and I, I got to get you. First thing I had, the first thing he did was got us out of that garden because there is no way that I'm going to have you to live forever like that. Yeah. And that's the first thing he did. Out you go. And we didn't get back. We can, we'd had no access back until Jesus' blood had wiped out what we did. And the problem that we have now is that we are stuck with this antiquated computer. And we are still trying to process God's knowledge with an outdated computer. And that's why men think they're still in sin. Because we, have, we cannot fathom. This, this, your, this fallen computer cannot process data that says there is no difference. It's it just, you can't process it. It, can't, it cannot process it. So therefore, and watch this, God never required you to process it. Mm -hmm. Therefore, God said, now, hey, 
forget what you think, forget what you fear, forget what you can understand, and just take me at my word. The just shall live by, not by what your brain can process. And that's why we have missed it at. But see, even though we say we are living by faith, we are still trying to process God's data with an outdated computer. That's why this thing ain't going nowhere. When the real living takes place, we're going to bury this one. And God has another one. He has an updated model. A new model that we are going to get. And that's what we groan. And that's what the whole creation travails. And we are waiting for our new computer to come out, the new model that we can really process. You can't process God with this. And that's where we are. And so God has freed us all right. And the sin is paid. And unless you can simply take God at his word and live based on what God says, I don't care what you feel or think. Yes, in order for you to get free, that's what you're going to have to do. If every time you try to reason this out, you're going to fall back into a sin pit. That's why God said, I want you to lose consciousness of sin. Have the, you should have no more consciousness of it. You've got to do this by faith. You've got to receive this the same way you receive the new, the same way you receive everything. It is by faith and not by your head. It's, you cannot process this information at your head. Amen. If you want to understand where you are, go back and see where you were. See where you came from. And we were, how, were, how was we? We were without knowledge of good and evil. We did not know the difference between either. That's how we were. Now you cannot argue that. Where did we fall from? We fell from being in a position of not knowing the difference between good and evil. God has restored us. And we can't take it. Well, you're going to have to take God at his word and grow into this. You're going to have to grow into this. You're going to have to grow into this. Now, the word of God declares that. The word of God, see, God says it. God doesn't have any problem saying these things to us. God has no problem in saying, I will never, how, how is it that God can never remember my sin anymore? Because there's no such thing as it, there is no more such thing, because without the knowledge of good and evil, there's no such thing as it. I just read it to you in our scripture lesson this morning, I would not have known sin had not the law said, thou shalt not. You can't even, what, what sin, what sin, sin what? Only way I found out about it was because the law and God brought them. Because now you want to know the difference. Okay, I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to give you the law. And the law is going to show you. And it's going to grind you the powder. It's going to show you you can't, take, you can't do it. And that's what he did. And when the law come aboard, the law made sin exceedingly sinful. The first thing Adam did without any kind of law was ran and hid himself because now he knows there's something wrong. He didn't know the term wrong before. He didn't know what it was. Then God come along and called Moses up there and said, come here, Moses, I'm going to show him what it is. And he gave that law to Moses and they go give it to him. They want it, give it to him. That's what he gave. And then, then we became exceedingly sinful. It's right there in the Word. And now it's become a way of life. Jesus has come and have set us free. And sin has become a way of life. And people, and you tell people you don't have any sin, they say, what, are you crazy? Why? It has become a way of life. It is so deep-seated. Well, if you really look at the Word of God, you are arguing against God. 
God said, your sins I will remember no more, but yet you go, we call ourselves sanctified believers and we bragging on our sin. You know something's wrong with that. The will of God. It is the will of God. Now listen to me. I'm going to give you the will of God for your life. Now, let's go, let's go back to, because this is so powerful, it almost frightens me. It does almost scare me. But I'm not scared of it because that's not, I'm, the Bible backing me up. That's why, that's, why I can, that's why I can stand and preach this, because the Bible backs me up with this. Now, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Colossians chapter number one. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Now watch this. What is, the, what is God, what is, the, what is this prayer? That you might be filled with the knowledge of the will of God. Okay. What is the will of God? God's will is made known unto us by his word because God's word is his will. Okay. You agree with that? You're still here, still here. Okay. Well then, does God want us to have the knowledge of good and evil? No. Because that's the first thing he said when he created us and put us in the garden. He said, do not go near the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I, I don't want you to have to deal with that. Uh -huh. that's right. I love you so much. Stay away from it. So it is the knowledge of the will of God for me not to know the difference between good and evil. Amen. That is his will. Amen. That's the will of God for me. It's for me not to know. But I, I disobeyed God, and now I have the knowledge of good and evil. Now I've got to erase it. That's what we are doing. We are erasing. You know, you ever, I remember when I was a kid, we went to school, we, we used pencils with erasers. And man, I used to erase more stuff. And the erasing part, it was bad. When you, when you erase it, it always left a black scar. These pens are better now. And left this black dub blob on your paper. And then that bad writing, you try to write over it, you know. By the time you finish with it, I neither the teacher knew what it was. But God has come and Jesus has come. And I'm giving this to you in a, in a blob and you got to just decipher it. Because I don't know how to preach this. I ain't never heard it before. I got out the Bible. Well, you, we disobeyed God. And we, God said, don't do that. Don't eat that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't eat it. But we ate it. And now, now you know. Now you know more than you want to know. You know more than you should know. You know more than God intended for you to know. But you know it. Because watch this. Go back. See, now watch this. Uh, oh, God, this is, really broke God's heart. Broke God's heart. God didn't like that. Then the Lord said, the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. It's like, oh, you guys really let me down. Now, because, because see, watch this, understand this. God knows what lie ahead of him dealing with us. Because after all, God may created us, and he, he's, he is responsible for us. Amen. Now, now, stay with me now. This, because this is, I know this, this is going to be, this is preaching like you probably never heard before, but just stay with it. God's going to show you something. God knows what he has, because God is like, now I see what you have done. And I know what I, I know what lie ahead. He, he knows all the ills 
of sin that lie here that he's going to have to deal with. So he says here in the 22nd verse of the third chapter of Genesis, Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil. And now lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life. Now he has never been restricted from the tree of life before. He has not been restricted from the tree of life until he partakes of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, can you imagine? Now you know good and evil. Now, because when you know something, it, now it takes effect in you. Now you take, take hold of the tree of life. Man, that, that's, that would be, oh, look at, look at the disaster. You're talking about disaster. Look, and God knows that. And so God said, and now lest he put out his hand and, and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the Garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man, and then he placed the cherub at the east of the gate of Eden, flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Because keep him, what is, what is God saying here? He has got to be kept away from this life. He has got to be kept away from me until I get him restored. That's what he's saying. Guarding this gate, guarding the life, guarding my glory from him, keeping my glory away from him because, see, that is, that is what Satan was, in, that is his intention. The prophets talked about Satan saying, I will exalt my throne above the most. Satan, he wants to become God. If he had, a, if he had a, got a hold, gotten a hold to God's attributes, can you imagine what you would be like? Because when he took over the man, he had access to everything that would have been in the man. And if the man had gotten hold of this tree of life and Satan took him over, brother, it would have been a disaster like you wouldn't have known. I mean, you talk about disaster, you don't know disaster. And so God shut it down to shut him off from my glory. Because he can't have, if he get to, if he get a hold of this like that, my God, my God. I mean, you think it's bad enough as it is. But so what did God do? God blocked the life of him. He shut himself off from the man. He severed him, drove him out from him. Until he can get this thing rectified. Then he can bring him back. Now, that he has done. He has paid for that. He's paid. Jesus came and he paid that sin debt. The sin is paid. Yes. And now God says, okay, come boldly to the throne of grace right. and obtain mercy and find grace to help yes. in time yes. of need. So now you have access back. So now wait a minute. Now, now this, is where I, this is where you got to really grab, take hold of this and just not stop. If we have now access Back to the throne of grace. Do we have our full position back? Yes. You have it back. You have it back. Now, what you got to do is, you have got to, how can I say this and stay safe? I don't know. Okay, let me give it to you this way. Then maybe you can take it, you can get it. God said, I will never remember your sin anymore. How does he do that? I don't know. I don't know everything yet. I don't know. I will, what is it? It's, the best I can say it is that with God's attributes, he is able to say it, and when he says it, it's so. But now watch this. <sighs> we have been redeemed. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, we have been restored. And there is a mystery in the process of this. There's a mystery here. <sighs> I have got to... I got to unlearn something. I, I disobeyed God and I got too smart. I learned of the knowledge of good and evil. Now I got to reverse that. 
and go back as if I never ate of the tree and I never knew. Now, the Word says all of this. I, I'm trying to put it in words, and I'm, I am know if I'm having a problem with it. I probably could say it in tongues. But, <laughs> but the best I can say it is, is we, have to, we have to unlearn the knowledge that we have of good and evil. And then the freedom that we now have in the New Covenant is to walk as though we have no knowledge of good and evil. That's what being sin free is. Is acting, walking as if though you don't. Now the scripture backs up everything I'm saying. We, but we, you know, people, I'm, people going to fuss with you about this. But that's what it amounts to. Because I know from the word of God, it is the will of God that I have no knowledge of good and evil. That's God's will. Now, what is it? What is it? <laughs> what is it? Well, it's called grace. That's what it's called. It's called grace. What does grace do? Grace takes me 